What concessions has Theresa May made then? Do we know exactly what she said to the pro-EU side, or has it just been about, trust me, I'll find some legal words that you'll be happy with? A little bit of the, of the last thing that you said, Anna. I mean, it, it seemed that at 3.45, on the cusp of, of a vote, and it really looked like the pro-Remainers were going to hold the fort and say, listen, we want a meaningful say. We want Parliament to be guiding this process. And what she essentially said was, look, trust me, I'm going to make it right. I'm going to agree on, like, A and B, and I'm going to get back to you. Now, it all gets very, very in the weeds about different clauses and this and that. The po I think the overarching point that's happening is it's just getting very, very hard for Theresa May to manage both sides of her party. Um, the idea that she's conceded to the pro-EU uh, side held for about all of two minutes because everyone was briefing against everyone else. You had the government saying, no, we've made no concessions. You had the Brexiteer saying, nope, uh, we're fine with everything. Um, Theresa May told us she hasn't given anything away. Then you had the pro-Remainers suddenly getting very irate and saying, Theresa May looked me in the eye and said that she was going to make this right. Um, and so what, what it's looking like right now is that essentially it's, uh, May has until Friday to come up with this sort of perfect compromise. And if not, the pro-Remainers, you know, if they feel betrayed, you know, they're really going to go after her. So both sides now are getting very, very angry. So uh, what, what about the pro-Brexit Tories? I mean, she's made promises to them. They're putting their trust in her. Um, what, mm. what does this mean for them? What it means is that they, I mean, at this point, the sort of most of them, apart from Ken Clark, have sort of accepted that Brexit is going to happen. But they want, it, they want a sensible Brexit. They want something smooth. And they want Parliament to be guiding the process. They want to give Martin Parliament a meaningful say. So Brexiteers, they think that that is just giving away Brexit. Um, what the direction of travel seems that May really doesn't have much control of this process. She's been losing control of it progressively. So probably at some point towards the end of the line, it's going to be that Parliament will have a say. If Theresa May and the talks in Brussels have been an impasse, cannot at some point sort of get things going again, by November, Parliament will be saying, OK, this is where we're going to be going. They're going to essentially be taking back the control. And that is and where things get very tricky. Yes, go on. Yeah, and um, Flavia, so, so we're still facing the same questions, aren't we, about how clean the break should be and who exactly in the UK uh, system should be deciding on that break. But none of that involves Brussels. So what does this mean for the negotiations with Brussels? I mean, I think what it means is that people in Brussels are looking and saying, you know, carry on comment. You know, they're scratching their heads and saying, well, what's going on? And I think most people would be forgiven you know, thinking the same, because it no longer seems like this is about Brexit or about um, what we're going to be doing. It's about a, a prime minister who is living day by day, with a, and it, there's no week that goes by where there isn't some kind of crisis. Um, so it's all sort of very confusing, and I think Brexit, to a certain extent, has been sort of pushed aside while we're sort of looking at a sort of rather farcical sort of parliamentary um, debate and war where basically this party is tearing itself apart.